Hello guys, gals, ladies and gentlemen. We are covering skeletal and muscular in 10 minutes or less. Today is hopefully going to be a little bit easier because I'm going to type on the screen rather than my serial killer chicken scratch. But let's keep in mind Miss Humphreys cannot spell. So don't be judgmental. Now we're looking at skeletal and muscular because we are looking at systems that interact with one another. Well, we know all systems interact with each other because our body is not just an isolated, alone thing. They all work together. So the most important part that you can think about skeletal and muscular working together is movement. Its main function is movement. Um, so there's actually not a box in here. So I am going to go ahead and write movement. And that is our biggest similarity between those two. That is, and remember in a Venn diagram, the circle is what they have in common. So movement is what they have in common. But again, we know that they work with a lot of different types, or excuse me, a lot of different systems, but these two interact with movement. So the skeletal system does have some other functions besides supporting our muscles for movement. The biggest function it has is structure. Structure, we would look crazy if we didn't have bones. I am convinced we would look like an Among Us character. Um, structure. Um, I'm convinced we would look like an Among Us character, but it also protects our organs, right? Our rib cage is so super helpful. We need that to protect our lungs and our heart. It also stores stuff for us. The main thing it stores is calcium. Calcium. And you don't actually have to like know that it stores calcium. It stores some minerals and um, some healthy things that we really enjoy and we're glad that we have because our bones can store those. Now, the super cool fun thing that it does is it makes our blood. And you're like, Miss Humphreys, what? Stop lying. I know. Now, the inside of our bones is this nice little squishy stuff right here. And that's called marrow. Bone marrow. And in the bone marrow, it actually makes our blood. So it makes blood. Well, we know from class that if I hear the word blood, I know I'm talking about the cardiovascular system. So just for full notes, comprehensive notes, we are going to draw another circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross this circle with skeletal, because remember, skeletal and cardio now have something in common. Well, we know our cardio moves the blood, moves the blood, and we know that our skeletal system makes the blood. So what they have in common, what's going to go in the middle is blood. Blood. If you hear the word blood, you think cardio, C-A-R-D-I-O, cardio, cardio, C-A-R-D-I-O, cardio. And our cardiovascular system moves our blood. Our skeletal system makes our blood. So they have blood in common. So we could absolutely, definitely say that the skeletal system and cardiovascular system work together. Absolutely. That is a fact. So they have all these functions. Well, just like everything, it's got parts to it. So a part of the skeletal system is our bones, duh. The bones are the biggest parts of that skelet or skeletal system, skeleton. Well, it'd be super uncomfortable if bones just rubbed up against each other and caused friction and pain. So there's this nice spongy stuff in between called cartilage. cartilage. And that is um, when you pop your knuckles, that is what's popping is that cartilage is letting carbon out. So that's what makes noise when you pop your muscles and bones. Um, the next thing is our bones are made of stuff, right? So we have to have cartilage and then we know that a collection of tissues makes an organ. So those tissues make our bones, but some tissues we have are some compact, hard outside of our bones, right? Remember Joe, I could smack his arm on the thing and nothing happens, but the inside makes blood, blood. so it's kind of squishy or what we call spongy. So our bones are made up of tissues, compact and spongy, and in between them is cartilage. So that protects our bones from rubbing up against each other. We know those bones provide structure and protection. We know they store stuff. And that inside spongy area is called marrow and it makes our blood, which works with our cardiovascular system because the cardiovascular system then moves that blood. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in skeletal is how they work together and how they move. Well, you have bones all over your body. You have 207 bones and they all attach to each other. So they all attach in different ways. When two bones meet, it's called a joint. So right here, a joint is when two bones meet. And remember, the wrong kind of meat homophones we're learning about in language arts. So 
So in two bones meat, there are many different kinds of joints, but the three we're going to look at in seventh grade right now is a hinge, a hinge joint. Now, where have you heard of a, the word hinge before? Correct, a door. So doors open and close, just going back and forth. So a hinge joint just goes back and forth. An example would be your elbow, elbow, and your knee. Also, your actual fingers, the tops of your fingers, not your wrist, but the tops of your fingers. So your elbows and your knees are great examples of hinge joints. Well, what if I need more than just back and forth? What if I need a 180 or a 360? What if I need to move my arm all the way around? Well, when we get to our shoulder and our hips, we have a lot more movement, and that's because we have what's called a ball and socket joint. A ball and socket joint literally is the ball of your leg bone clicks in to the socket of your hip. This is very com this is um, in your shoulder and hip. So this is when they say my shoulder dislocated. This is what they're talking about. The, the socket, excuse me, the ball came out of the socket, your shoulder and your hip. This is shoulder. That doesn't look right. Does it shoulder? Or, nope, that doesn't look right. Shoulder. Okay, your ball and socket is uh, dislocating is literally when the ball of your arm bone comes out of the socket of your, what's this called? Shoulder. Shoulder. <laughs> the, ball, the actual arm bone of, the ball of your arm bone comes out of the socket of your shoulder. And that's how you dislocate. And that's in your hip as well. So the last one we're going to talk about is what if it's not just two bones meeting right next to each other? Your wrist, the space between the bottom of your arm bones and the top of your hand has seven bones in it. Seven. You can absolutely shatter your wrist. Break all seven bones and all seven of those bones have to work together at the same time to move our wrist. We're going to call that gliding. And this is very similar to your wrist. Gliding is when there's a lot of different bones connected all in the same place and we can't just go back and forth or 360. I can't really 360 my wrist. I can't pull it back to touch my hand. Um, but there's too many bones in there to just move back and forth. So we have hinge, ball and socket, and gliding. So that is our skeletal system. Now we said our skeletal system works with our muscular system for movement. So the main function of the muscular system is movement. The main well, muscular system is movement. Now what movement what is it moving is a great question we have different types to determine what different things it's moving so let's look at our types the very first type that we want to look at is cardiac think cardiac cardi b this is cardi a cardiac is only only in your heart because remember your heart has these very specific functions it has to beat all the time da -da 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 -da, without getting tired so it has to have a very specific type of muscle that doesn't get tired the next kind is our smooth muscle and our smooth muscle is all of our organs so when we say our muscular system works with other systems the biggest system it's going to work with is digestive because your entire stomach is made of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. Your uh, muscular system works with your digestive because your tum tum, your small intestine, your large intestine, everything we learned about yesterday is made of smooth muscle. And lastly, well, it deals with skelet skeletal system. So we have skeletal muscle, skeletal muscle. And their the skeletal muscle is the actual muscle that helps our body move outside movement. This is how we are able to um, grab for things, reach for things, put things down, etc. So there are two different types of skeletal muscle. So there are two types of skeletal muscle. The first type, excuse me, where my dog go? The first type is called a flexor. Our muscles flex. Um, a flexor, and our muscles flex. This is kind of like a bicep a quad, anything that you can pull your body closer together is a flexor. But we have to do the opposite of flex, which is called extend. So extensors, extensors. Now, the really cool thing about our bodies is that these are in pairs. Our body thought, that's as pairs, pairs. 
our body is in, has flexors and extensors in pairs because if a muscle can move forward, it has to have something move it back. So if you look at this image right here, let me see if I can blow this up. If you look at this image right here, our bicep is a flexor that makes our arm come forward. But the back of our arm is called a tricep, and that extends, that pulls this muscle back down. So they are pairs, flexors and extensors. Bicep and tricep is the easiest to remember. And that concludes our notes, ladies and gentlemen. That is the skeletal and muscular system in 10 and a half minutes.